So Nicole comes from a well-to-do family. Her family have collected some cute coins over the years. Her dad is in the real estate industry and her mom, well, she has a coffee store. She imports some of the most exotic coffees from around the world and she sells them. Um, and so they've grown up in a life of privilege. Both their parents have gone into spaces that have afforded them, you know, successful businesses. And um, they've been able to share those blessings with their children. And they did that. They really did that. As a result of their privilege, Nicole and her brother Stephen traveled and traveled and traveled with their parents too. Um, unfortunately, two years ago her brother um stephen passed away in an accident tragedy visited that family and the family was re left reeling the Torres family were left reeling it was a very hard blow they are very close-knit family and nicole was especially close to her brother and so just the events of everything that have happened or had happened left them in a very difficult place and so two years down the, the line they're still trying to kind of recover and make sense of it and come to peace in terms with what has happened to Stephen. so in her i guess need to remain connected and close to her brother nicole started visiting a lot of art galleries now let me tell you a little bit about Stephen. Stephen was an art enthusiast he he Everything was art to him. He lived, he breathed, he talked art. If he wasn't painting himself, he was collecting pieces. He was in art galleries, attending exhibitions. He was that person who art became his life. It really became his life. And he stuck with it. And because she knew her brother and she knew how much she loved him, that became her way of staying connected to him. That became her way of almost holding on to Stephen and seeking him out. And so she did what she usually did. If there was an exhibition and she knew that there were artists or art pieces being showcased by artists her brother had been particularly fond of, she made it a point to go. So this particular um summer evening warm summer evening she slipped on a really cute summer dress and she attended this exhibition she went to the gallery and did what she always did as soon as she entered grabbed a pamphlet grabbed a glass of wine and started making her way around the room to have a look at all of this art and to really just take it in and pre appreciate it and now she's moving around the room and she's moving and she stops in front of a painting and she reads about it in the booklet and she keeps on moving around and staring and admiring the pieces and just really 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 spending time in that space welcoming inviting Stephen in to that space this was her time with her brother he had passed on and that was the one part of him she felt she was just not ready to let go of and so she's moving around this gallery she's looking at all these pieces she's especially paying attention to the artists he liked and taking in their artwork and appreciating it and she eventually gets to this piece and my goodness that piece was stunning it took her breath away and it just so happened to be an artist that her brother loved too and she stopped and she marveled she stared you know she was in absolute awe of this beautiful artistic um piece she stared and she stared and she stared she she was analyzing this piece she was really 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 looking at this piece when Eventually, somebody came and stood next to her and was looking at this piece as well. And she kind of looked overhead at him and she carried on looking and just taking in this artwork. And um, the guy next to her says, it's beautiful, isn't it? And she says, it's absolutely breathtaking. I can't take my eyes off it. And he was like, yeah, this artist will do that to you. And they both stand there staring at this piece. Eventually, he says, I'm Will, by the way. And she says, I'm Nicole. And... Um, they spend more time just looking at this piece, marveling. And they start making their way around the room and talking and having conversations about the art. Eventually, Will feels comfortable enough to say to Nicole, um, I know this is going to sound a bit um, 
weird but would you would you care to join me for dinner i'm going for dinner after this and she says yes why not i i mean i'm also hungry i'd love to get something to eat and he says okay so eventually they leave the gallery and they find a cute cafe and they have dinner and wine and continue to talk about the art pieces and share their ideas on art and for nicole this was so breath this was just like a, fr a breath of fresh air because she was speaking to somebody who understood art. She was speaking to somebody who loved it and appreciated it as much as she had come to understand and appreciate it. And as much as she wasn't into it when Stephen was around, she understood it because he was always teaching her. And so for her speaking to somebody like that, just it sat well with her. It was what she wanted. So they were sitting there and they were talking, they were having this conversation and talking about the art they saw and some of their favorite artists and what brought them into this art space. And he came to explain that he's an art dealer and that's why he was at the gallery that evening and that he's very big in the art um yeah and just in this art space he's very he, he's he's an active member and he was saying to her you know i would love to show you some more galleries i think you would really love um the vibe i think you would love the art so we must we must make it a point and after that dinner, they were pretty much inseparable. For the next um, eight months, they were attending art shows together. They were going to dinners, um, going for wine, um, because Nicole came from a family who really appreciated wine. She grew up near vineyards, so her thing was, okay, well, let me impart my wisdom about wine. Let me teach you more about it. And so that became their life, and they were really, really into each other. They enjoyed one another's company. They enjoyed just being within and pouring into each other. Eight months into their relationship, Nicole tells Will, look, I have to go home. I need to go home. I want to go and visit my family, but I would love for you to come and meet them. And he says, of course, I would love to come with you. I mean, remember, they haven't been apart really since the day they met. And so he says, okay, I would love to come. Now, when Nicole spoke to her family, they made it clear, well, her, her father and her mom, that, look, we're going to be at the holiday home. So we would love for you to join us there. And, um, Nicole's like perfect. I mean, we're coming on vacation. It fits, it works. So they take a flight out and then they drive down to the holiday home and they get there. And from the moment they get there, the Torres family are so welcoming. They are so happy to meet this new guy friend of, of um, Nicole's. They're happy because, you know, she had spent so much time talking about him and, and, Guys, they understand that they, 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 their child has passed away and they're grieving that, but they also understand that their child's sibling is suffering. Nicole is suffering. There's a lot happening inside her internally. And while, and while they are parents grieving the loss of their child, they also understand that their child is grieving the loss of their sibling. So they just wanted Nicole to be okay. They wanted her to meet people who made her feel okay. They wanted her to start living again, to get back into the swing of things because whether they liked it or not, Stephen wasn't coming back. And so for them meeting um, this guy, meeting Will was just such a breath of fresh air because they could see she was genuinely happy. So the day they got there, they put their bags down and everything. They had staff helping out. They put their bags down and there was lunch waiting for them cooked by um, compliments of the chef. So they sit down and they have lunch. Now this is their opportunity to get to know um, Will better. So... Um, of course, Mrs. Torres is the one to speak because Nicole's dad isn't much of a talker. He really isn't much of a talker. He sits and he observes and he speaks when necessary, but he lets his wife do the socializing. And so, of course, Mrs. Torres is like, Will, so yes, tell us a bit about yourself. Tell us a bit about your family. And Will starts. He says, well, you know, um, my dad died when I was really young and my mom remarried. Uh, my stepdad um, and he really has been I mean he is the person I know as dad he really stepped into that role he took good care of us still does take good care of my mom and he's a very success a successful businessman he's into import and export and as a result we were also fortunate fortunate enough to travel and um, that's how I came to fall in love with art I don't know if Nicole told you but I'm an art dealer um, my passion is in this art space and um, 
yeah, really, this is the life my stepdad introduced us to. Um, and she's like, wow, that's absolutely amazing. I'm so sorry to hear about her, your dad. And she, he was just like, look, I mean, we didn't have a very close relationship. And my stepdad has been with us for so long that I guess it kind of plugged that hole. And um, she says, no, I understand. And then she says, well, well, I really hope that you um, love wine because I've booked for us to all go to that vineyard. We're going for a bit of wine tasting tomorrow. And he says to her, you look, your daughter has been gracious enough to teach me about wine and I've developed the palate for it. So I'm very excited to do this wine tasting with you and your family. And she's like, that's good. Cause I know my girl, I know Nikki loves her wines. So this is an opportunity for you to get to know what she loves better. And he's like, no, cool, cool, cool. So they sit there, they have lunch, they laugh. Now, Mr. Torres isn't saying much, he's observing and they, you know, just have a very good lunch. Now the following day they get up and they make their way to the vineyard. How you do mm, 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 mm. Mm, 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 mm. get there do the wine tasting from white to red to sparkling they did the damn thing they had an amazing afternoon indulging in some of the best wines out there eventually they come back to the vacation home and um as I said to you before, uh, Mrs. Torres' business deals with a lot of coffees from around the world. So when they got there, I mean, look, they've been drinking wine all day. So the first thing she says is, let's all meet in the dining area. I've had um, the staff prepare some coffee for us and some cake. Let's just, you know, relax. And so when they get back to the holiday home, of course, the coffee's there um, and percolating. And so they sit down and have some co coffee. So Mrs. Torres says to Will, um, you know, Will, I was thinking about it yesterday. Um, I remember you said you're an absolute lover of art. And I don't know how much Nikki told you about Steve and her brother, but he actually has one of his studios here in our holiday home up in the attic. And I think it would be really amazing if you would go and have a look at his pieces. And Mr. Torres was already like Angela. Mrs. Torres, I mean, what are you doing? And she said, no, but I mean, look, he's an art lover. He appreciates art. Stephen's stuff is accumulating dust up there. Why not let other people see it and appreciate his work? And the dad is just not feeling it. Now, understand this. His son has died in a very tragic accident. That was his only boy. He's still reeling. But of course, as the head of the family, he needs to keep it together. The idea of somebody else rummaging through his son's stuff is just nauseating it's sickening to him like i don't want anybody touching my son's stuff i don't want anybody looking at my son's stuff but mrs torres is just he's not going to touch anything he's not going to take anything just let him go and see he's an art lover he's 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 put nikki in the space of art let him go and have a look so Will says, I would love to have a look at the pieces. And Mr. Torres is just looking like he doesn't agree with it, but he's not about to argue with his wife. So after coffee and cake, they make their way up to the attic. And of course, when they get there, it's a little emotional for Nicole because she hasn't been here since Stephen died. But that studio space is as beautiful as she remembers it to be. As soon as she walks in, she immediately notices his painting station that was right near the window. She notices all the beautiful pieces of art he had painted over time that are just kind of scattered everywhere. His paint, his brushes, his um, pieces of art that he's collected, his everything. It's in that space and he's just, she's just like, oh, my dear brother my dear, dear brother. And she walks around and she starts explaining things to Will, like this is a piece that Stephen painted. This is another piece he painted. This is where he would sit when he would paint. These are the type of things he loved to paint, really speaking about her brother. And then she said, and these pieces over here are not pieces Stephen painted. These are pieces that he collected over time because he was also a collector of art. And, um, Will is like, okay, well, yeah, let's, let's have a look. And he's looking eagerly, like watching her, you know, rummage through, just kind of go through the art and show him. So this piece, there's this piece, there's this piece. 
as Nicole is showing him the different pieces, Will is like, but he tries with everything in him not to raise any alarm. And he's looking at the pieces and looking at the pieces and looking at the pieces and he doesn't say anything. He lets her continue to explain and to talk. And Nicole says, you know, my brother used to say all the time, it doesn't matter how cheap or expensive an art piece is, is it's priceless to him. And he, this was his life. This was his escape. And he's watching Nicole show him all these different pieces, just going through, going through, going through. And he's dead quiet. Eventually, she says to him, babe, let's go back out. Let's go to the lounge area. Perhaps we can you know, just chill and later on make our way to town for the movie you wanted to watch. Let's just go and catch that movie and then we can have dinner much later. And he says, okay, but my love, I need to go and have a shower. I'm feeling hella sticky. I just want to go and have a shower. And she says, no, you're right. I also need to take a shower. Um, you go into the, into the room you're sleeping in because they weren't sleeping in the same room under their par the parents' roof. So you go into your room and I'll go to one of the other guest rooms to take a shower. And um, yeah, I'll come to the room when I'm done. And he says, okay, he kisses her and he makes his way to the bathroom. As soon as, as soon as Will gets to the bedroom, he closes the door behind him. He goes into the bathroom, closes that door behind him, and he switches on the, 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 the shower. And now the water is just coming out, out, out. And he picks up the phone and he starts dialing. Now he calls a man by the name of Daniel. So Daniel picks up the phone and says, um, Will, how have you been? Where have you been? It's really good to hear from you, buddy. What's going on? What's up? And Will immediately jumps into it. He says, I've got very good news. I have just come across some original art pieces and they are in the region of between eight to $10 million. Um, and I know that you, your get now Daniel is a, is, a, is a gallery owner and he says to Daniel, I know you and you, I know your gallery, I know you and you deal with top of the range pieces and these this art needs the best homes these pieces of art need the best home and i thought of you and he's like oh wow wow thank you brother but are you sure these are original pieces and he says i'm sure and he says who's the artist will tells him the artist's name and he's like will are you sure and he says daniel i do this for a living now daniel's worked with will he knows Will. He knows the level of art pieces that Will brings in. Will is here. He knows he has impeccable taste in art. He knows, the, he knows his art. He knows his artists. He knows. This is part of his job. He's able to value these pieces. And he says to him, Daniel, I'm sure. I'm sure. I just need to get a few things in order, but I've got these pieces. I just need you to give me the go ahead to bring them to you for your gallery. And he says, bring them through, bring them through, brother. I'm here when you are. And he says, okay, I'll be in town soon and I'll give you a call when I get there. He drops the phone. Now he's pacing up and down in that bathroom. There is so much going through his mind. He cannot believe that this family are sitting on art pieces worth millions and millions of dollars. And what became abundantly clear to him while he was going through these pieces with Nicole, who was explaining these pieces away, who was referring to them as odd, who thought they were cheap, who was telling him that her brother said, this piece may not be expensive, but... It occurred to him, this family did not know that they were sitting on art worth this much money. This family had an attic full of art pieces that were worth millions and millions. And just judging from what Nicole had shown Will, he had spotted already three pieces of art that were in the higher millions. He, had, he, he couldn't believe it. He could not believe it. And so while, he, while he's pacing up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, the next thing that comes to his mind is, how the f am I going to get these pieces out of here? 
He knows Mr. Torres. The mere fact that Mr. Torres didn't even want him in the attic made it very clear to him that even asking if he could take this art off, his ha off their hands, even asking if he could sell it and give them a commission was a no. Mr. Torres didn't care about the money. Money, they had that. They had that. So it was not about the money. They had a connection. It was sentimental to them. He knew there was no ways he could broach that topic again. He knew there was no ways he could ask them if he could have the art, if he could take the art, if he could sell the art and make sure it was beneficial to them too. That conversation could not happen. And so now he's pacing up and down, pacing, pacing, pacing. And then the more important questions come to him. Who was Stephen? Okay, yes. Nicole said he was an art enthusiast, but how did Stephen get his hands on such expensive pieces of art? And why does he remember one of the art pieces being reported as stolen many years ago? Who is Stephen? Why does he have an attic full of art pieces worth millions of dollars and has made his family believe the pieces are worthless? Who was Stephen? And why don't his family know this? Why are his family under the impression that their son merely loved art, that he collected it, that he occasionally bought it? Who is Stephen? Who is Stephen? And so Will is standing there and he's shaking his head and he's trying to figure out what do I say to Nicole? What don't I say to Nicole? But what is very clear to him is that the Torres family did not know Stephen the way they thought they did.